Are you ready? Ready. All right, let's go. Kevin here, top one financial advisor. And best-selling author. We are here to talk about the stock market. Today I wanna to talk about the dogs of the Dow investing strategy as well as have a conversation about investing philosophy and how it can help you grow and evolve as an investor. So first, let's talk about the dogs of the Dow. This conversation has to start with what is the Dow? When I say the Dow, I'm talking about the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That is the original index. It was founded like 137 years ago. And basically it takes the 30 largest companies in the United States. And when we say the market at first, this is what we were talking about. Most people talk about the Dow did this, the Dow Jones did that. That's pretty much what it is. Now in totality, it's only 30 companies. So it's not the entire stock market. It doesn't represent the entire stock market, but it is the most famous and most popular index engaged that we use to say the market is doing X, Y, or Z. The S&P 500 is mostly what we talk about here. And because that is a, a better representation of the entire U.S. economy, but really the entire stock market. Because again, that's 500 companies. You got enough to say, hey, what's going on here versus just 30. Now, companies in the Dow Jones, you these are all all household names that I know that you have heard of before. I'm just going to read a re really quick list. I'm not going to read them all. Uh, American Express coming, becoming one of my favorites. Apple, Boeing, Home Depot, Visa, Verizon, if I didn't say that one already, Walmart, uh, Disney, and then Dow. Like it used to be Dow Chemical, now it's just Dow. JP Morgan, Coca-Cola, Johnson Johnson. You, you know every last one of these names that's on this list. So with the Dow, the dogs of the Dow strategy, the strategy essentially says this, you take that entire list of 30 companies and you pick the 10 that have the highest dividend yield. What is a dividend? Remember a dividend is a share of payment. A, I like to call it a reward um, that companies will share with you if you own the stock. Um, companies that, like I talked about, we've talked about dividend stocks before, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Coca-Cola, basically saying, look, we're doing well, we did well this year, here is a dollar for every share that you, you earn. But dividend yield says, well, let's take you know that dollar divided by the share price, and that's gonna give us a percentage that makes things a little easier to compare companies to each other that have vastly different share prices. You know, Coca-Cola may only be $70 a share. I know Home Depot is, I don't know, three or $400 a share. Well, a $3 dividend at Home Depot is different than a $1 dividend at Coca-Cola. The share prices are different. So we use dividend yields to compare the two. And what this strategy says is take all the companies, rank them by dividend yield, take the top 10 and hold them for an entire year. You come back the next year and then you switch out the companies that may change. Now, in some cases, like a Verizon, you'll find that Verizon has been on this list forever. Uh, I went all the way back to 2010 and they showed up on the list every single year since 2010. And Verizon's not clearly, by the, the tone of my voice, they're not the most exciting stock, but they do pay good dividends. So let's talk about the positives for the dogs of the Dow, then talk about some of the negatives and things that you do want to be aware about. Uh, first, the positive is these are usually, well, actually, they're always the Dow 30 is the biggest companies in the US. They're always what we call blue chip names. They are among the most reliable. They're not going bankrupt no time soon. You know your money's gonna be there. Now it does not guarantee that the money is going to grow because again, I could argue Verizon and AT&T that have appeared on the Dogs of Dow list had done all that great. Okay, so that's, that's not a guarantee. But I, I know that they're not going bankrupt. I know that it's not a penny stock. I know that I don't need to wake up and see, you know, 50% drops, you know, every other day. Again, doesn't mean it won't happen or it can't happen, but it's just unlikely because these are so well-established, entrenched names, if you will. So that is that is one good thing. The other good thing is worst case scenario, let's say if you don't make a whole bunch of money doing this particular strategy, at least you're getting some dividends. And at a time like this in 2022, you need some pretty good solid dividend stocks. You got stocks like Coca-Cola that are doing quite well that was on the dollars of the Dow list this time around. It may not be the next time around. So those are some of the positive. Some of the negative things are that, well, it doesn't really beat the S&P 500, which is interesting to say. So remember, 
Dow Jones, only 30 companies compared to 500. Should I be comparing that? Is that an apples to apples comparison? Probably not. However, in a world where I can easily buy an index fund that is the S&P 500, I'm probably going to make more money over the long run by investing in an index fund. That is, that's true. However, this strategy does very, very well in at least meeting and sometimes beating the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Take that for what it is. And there are some variations of the Dollars of Dow strategy that have done even better. So they, we, we can talk about this a little later, but they have what's called the small dog strategy, where you're taking that 10 and then basically choosing the five stocks that have the lowest share price and investing in those. And those have shown to make even more money than the original Dow Jones 10 list. So those are some of the things that you need to know about it, some of the positive negatives. One of the other things that came across in my research that I was doing for an article about the Dow's of Dow, when that comes out, I'll let y'all know, um, was the, the tax implications. So if you are, let's say you're doing this with tens of thousands of dollars and you're buying and selling every year, that could that could hit you on taxes assume that you're not holding these for the long term in a in a non-retirement account if i'm doing this in my ira i'm fine i'm not worried about capital gains or anything like that if i'm doing this let's say on my public account if i'm doing this on just a regular taxable brokerage account might be something you want to be concerned about the other thing too is that it is not necessarily diversified you only got 10 stocks that's it and if they're all just in the dow jones which is not diversified to begin with then you may be concentrated in just you know three or four areas and the chips are going to fall wherever the chips fall the last thing you want to know that is that in some years like over time the strategy is relatively solid i think most people will, will agree with that especially if you go back to uh, 12 years ago to 2010. you act even further again it's it's pretty solid that does not mean that every year it is great in fact um in 2008 when the market was down 30 some odd percent the dogs of dow strategy lost 41 not all that great last year in 2021 it, it made money but it did not beat the the overall stock market and it wasn't even close so there are some pros and cons the good thing again kind of circling back to the positives is that it is really simple and that is going to bring us to our next conversation about investing philosophy um, but before we get into that i'll just pick out a few of the names and how they they are doing because again yes it's a simple strategy maybe all 10 stocks may not work for you but there's there are some things that you may want to pay attention to so i just i looked at the dow 10 i will put that entire list here this is from dogs you can go there and learn as much as you want about the dogs of the dow but again sometimes i, I like to look at and just just pick out a few ideas because while the entire 10 may not be the best strategy for you may not be the most uh impactful thing there are some things that you do need to know so looking at year to date that is from january of 2022 to right now here are some of the names that were on the dogs of the doubt list and how they've done so far you got chevron ticker symbol CVX, and that one's up 42%. Now, yes, this is a part of inflation. Yes, this is a part of the Russian-Ukraine conflict. But again, had you done this in December of 2021, this was before all of this stuff happened, and you would not have known that, but it was on the list, and you would have profited um, from that unfortunate event, but you would have had it in advance anyway. Um, going to, to Mer Merck, however you want to, Merrick, however you want to pronounce it, MRK, that one's up 13%. And mind you, the S&P 500 is still down this year and it's down 5.5%. So you're talking 40, 42%, you're talking 13%. Um, you have Coca-Cola, I've been talking a lot about, it's up 7% this year. Then you've got Verizon that's up like a half percent, 0.58% if you want to be more specific there. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Verizon actually up 1.37%, my bad Verizon, uh, which is in, in a year like this, I'll take that 1.37 when the overall market is down five and a half. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take my, my shade for, for Verizon. I, I retract those statements. Um, and then you have other stocks, again, on the list. I'm not going to do them all. Intel is down 7.65% year to date. And then you've got 3M. Their symbol is MMM. They're down 15%. So again, it, it can be a mix. It can be a mix. And here's where we talk about investing philosophy. When I started investing in about 2010, after my internship, I was, a, so I interned, went to New York City for the first time. I, for those who don't know the origin story <laughs> and haven't heard it like on the podcast or anything else before. So here's what happened. 2010, took an internship, went to New York City. I'm from Oklahoma, as you can see, and I'd never been to New York City before. So I was just bombarded by all this stuff in the big city. 
I did not understand the internship. I didn't know what we was doing. I was confused. And all they were talking about was investing and charts and graphs and macroeconomics. I was like, I don't know what none of this stuff is. I was confused. And then once I got back to school, I just poured through everything and started my company, Building Brand. And here we are today. But the entire thing started when I started to really learn about the market. I actually started with the dogs of the Dow. And I used what was called an investing simulator. You can find that somewhere at like... Uh, investopedia.com where it lets you practice and understand how the market works. I did that for a few years and I was like, eh, I'm, I'm going to start tweaking this. And that's why I started to form my own investing philosophy. If you've been paying very close attention or you're already familiar with the dollars of the Dow, you will notice a few things. I've always said, right, I, I buy, I hold for six months to a year, and I come back and reevaluate. Some of those have been confirmed by studies like UCLA's, um, and some of it is a part of the dogs of the Dow. Now it's not simply I'm looking for dividend yield because y'all know me. I don't I don't really care if it's got a good dividend. I'll take it. If it doesn't, you know, it, it is what it is. For example, and this is one of the the um, criticisms of the dogs of the Dow is Apple is a Dow company. It does pay a dividend, but it's really, really small. It's never been on the list, at least not recently, because it, it, the dividend yield will never be there because Apple stock price historically goes pretty high and the dividend stays pretty small. You do the math, it ain't gonna, it's not gonna be a 4% dividend yield. So you miss, you've been missing out on Apple if this was the only thing that you were ever investing in. And that's, that's what I'm here for, right? So what I'm here for is take elements of certain investing strategies from certain books, from certain YouTube channels, and start to kind of take and inform yourself and really make your own style and make your own thing out of it that you can tweak and tailor and perfect and make your own. I didn't get here, and for me, this is like a five, six, seven year journey for me to figure this out and really kind of pick at certain things. But that journey starts now. That journey starts now. There are some people who only choose dividend stocks. If that's fine, right? There's some people who only do the dollars of the doubt. There's some people who do something in between and some people do like all types of, of crazy things, right? But the entire thing is take what works, take what has been researched and then start to make tiny tweaks to fit who you are as an investor and what you like as an investor. I found out that I found out that I wasn't here for investing in a company, sorry, Verizon, like Verizon, that has not historically done well on average year to year. That's not to mean that Verizon has lost money. In fact, it, it averages about 9% a year since 2010. But uh, Apple is way better than that, right? Um, even Coca-Cola, with the exception of this year, Coca-Cola for many years had been like, eh, you know, like I'm getting good dividends, I'm not losing money, but I'm, I'm really not, I'm not really moving in the way that I want to. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Microsoft is a Dow company as well. I just want to double check that. I'm sure they are. And yes, they're on here. Microsoft is one of my favorite companies because it makes money and it does incredibly well, but it's never on the dollars of the Dow list. So for me, I had to learn that and say, look, I, I like a few companies from the Dow. I like other companies that aren't in it. Uh, maybe it's a Tesla. Um, you know, maybe it's, I'm just pulling names out the top of my head. Maybe it's a Target, a Costco, whatever. And they're not on this list. So I had to create my own investing philosophy, my own process to invest and have rules around. And it's important to have that so that you are not confused and you don't start to make mistakes, whatever the market does, or whatever it is it wants to do. I always know what to do because I have a very defined process for me. And we've discussed this process over and over again for what mine is. But it's your job as, as an investor because you have your own risk, you have your own goals, you you do what you do, right? So take what you learn here, take what you learn from the Dogs of Dow, take what you learn from whatever books, and start to say, okay, I like these things, I'm, I take what I can, leave what I don't, and that's how you become your own investor, and that's how you can work within the investing space and really become more interested, learn more, and then again, and most importantly, become a more informed, more powerful investor. All right, that's it for me. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube -y things they tell you to do. If you have any questions, comments, or video topic suggestions, feel free to drop those in the comments below. All right, talk to you later.